Thank you for choosing LiftMaster. The new HCT DCU Specialty Overhead Operator has many industry-leading features and is UL325 approved for use as both a gate operator and a commercial door operator. This video will provide an overview of how to assemble, install, and wire the HCT DCU on a site with a sectional commercial door. Your installation may vary. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. The procedures demonstrated should only be performed by trained professional installers and service technicians. Safe operation and servicing requires that you follow all instructions and safety advisories found in the manual. To locate a trained professional installer or service technician, go to liftmaster.com slash locate a dealer. The HCT DCU is intended for installation only on gates and doors used for vehicles, not for pedestrian traffic. Before beginning, check the balance of the door to make sure it moves freely and does not drift. An unbalanced door may prevent the operator from functioning properly. Make sure to close the door after checking the balance. Sectional doors should also have horizontal and vertical reinforcements already installed. These provide support and help prevent damage to the door. Unpack the HCT DCU and place it on packaging material to protect the product and the floor. We recommend having a helper as the product is heavy. The HCT DCU carton includes a motor unit, two 12 volt batteries, a set of CPS UN 4G photoelectric sensors, an antenna, and warning signs. Open the cover of the motor unit by loosening one screw and removing the other. Inside you'll find the installation manual and quick start documentation and the vented plug. Rails are shipped separately and are sized for 8, 10, and 12 foot doors. Connecting hardware is included. Position the motor unit on the floor about 12 feet away from the sectional door with the cover side facing up and with the cap screws facing the door. Open the motor unit by removing the screw nearest the rail and loosening the other. Then open the cover. Remove the vented plug from the instruction manual package and set aside. Loosen the two screws holding the chain guard in place and slide it back towards the board, then lift it out. Lay the rail trolley side up with the keyholes toward the motor unit. Cut the cable tie securing the chain to the rail and move the chain aside. Loosen the cap screws on the motor unit using an Allen wrench. Slide the keyholes on the rail onto the cap screws on the motor unit. Then secure the rail using the provided carriage bolts, lock nuts, and washers. The nut and lock washer attach on the inside of the motor unit. Tighten the cap screws. Cut the other cable tie on the door arm and put the keys in a safe place. Position the trolley within three feet of the door end of the rail. Locate the turnbuckle. Grasp the bolt with the hex nut and carefully turn the turnbuckle so that it moves away from the hex nut until the bolt with the hex nut is disengaged. Forcing the turnbuckle in the wrong direction may cause permanent damage to the turnbuckle or bolt. Carefully wrap the chain around the sprocket inside the motor unit. Reattach the chain and adjust the turnbuckle until the chain hangs no more than a quarter inch from the top of the rail. Take this measurement at the middle of the rail. Two sets of hands makes this process easier. Tighten the hex nut to secure the chain. Slide the chain guard back into position and secure it with the screws. While the operator is still open and on the ground, note the positions of the plastic knockouts for wiring entrapment protection and other accessories. 
you will need to supply strain reliefs to insert in the wiring holes. Secure the cover closed with the screws. Turn the operator over, being careful to keep the cover on the protective packaging. Remove the dome plug from the operator chassis. Using an Allen wrench, remove the solid plug in the gear reducer and replace it with the vented plug. The vented plug allows pressure to be released from the gearbox to avoid leaking. Tighten the vented plug with a socket or Allen wrench. Finally, reinsert the dome plug. The HCT DCU is UL325 approved and can be installed to either a one-piece gate or door or a sectional door. For installations with one-piece doors, the operator must be centered horizontally. For sectional doors, the operator does not need to be centered as long as the door is properly balanced. For this sectional door installation, we'll position the operator slightly off-center. With the door closed, mark the header wall or ceiling with the location where you'll mount the header bracket for the rail. Because of the position of the door spring and the low headroom, we will mount the header bracket to angle iron that is attached directly to structural supports in the ceiling. Evaluate the specifics of your site and consult the manual for the various installation options. Do not attach the header bracket over drywall. The header bracket must be rigidly fastened to structural supports on the header wall or ceiling. Open the door and mark the ceiling with the location where you'll mount the motor unit. The motor unit can be welded or bolted to the ceiling using this mounting flange or a flush mount installation. The carton for the HCT DCU includes a cutout template that is helpful for marking the mounting hole locations on the ceiling. For this demonstration, we've mounted a support bracket to structural supports in the ceiling. Then, we've added a second support bracket for the motor unit to attach to. If you choose to mount the motor unit using support brackets, you will need to supply them. The commercial door operator must be fastened securely to the structural supports of the ceiling. Concrete anchors must be used if mounting any brackets into masonry. This video demonstrates installation to a finished ceiling only. Work with a helper to position the operator and rail so the header bracket is centered on your mark or the support bracket you've installed. Be sure to keep the cover protected by moving the protective packaging material along with the operator. Bolt or weld the header bracket to the wall or the installed support bracket. Be sure to use the proper hardware, such as concrete anchors, if applicable. Lift the operator and align it with the mark or support on the ceiling. There are several ways to temporarily support it. You can prop the operator up on a ladder or use a material lift. Bolt or weld the operator to the ceiling. For sectional door installations, you'll need to replace the door arm with the sectional door arm, which is made up of a straight arm and a curved arm. Attach the door arm bracket to the top panel of the door to a structural support. Bolt or weld the arm to the door arm bracket. You may need to unlock the trolley to position the door arm so it is angled slightly toward the motor unit. For gate and one-piece door installations, the arm is welded or bolted directly to the center of the top of the door or gate. The HCT DCU features an inherent entrapment protection system. Addition of an external monitored protection system for each entrapment zone is required prior to gate or door movement. In this installation, the entrapment zone is the area where the door closes onto the ground or floor. There are three options for wiring entrapment protection devices depending on the type of device and how you want the device to function. Refer to the installation manual for details. This operator comes with a set of CPS UN 4G photoelectric sensors included. The photoelectric sensors must be mounted facing each other across the entrapment zone at a height no more than 6 inches above the floor. When properly connected and aligned, the photoelectric sensor will detect an obstruction in the path of its beam. 
If an obstruction breaks the beam while the door is closing, the operator will stop and typically reverse to the full open position. Each CPS UN 4G sensor is provided with 32 inches of wire. You will need to provide the wire that extends from each sensor up to the operator. Do not run this wiring in the same conduit with AC power. This installation is pre-wired. If you're splicing to wire colors that differ from those of the CPS UN 4G sensors, be sure to note which color you splice to the brown wire and to the blue wire. Remove the cover screws and open the operator. The cover can be completely removed if it makes it easier for you to reach connectors inside the operator. First, you'll need to remove the nut next to the hinge that is closest to the rail. Pop out the plastic knockouts and install strain reliefs you've supplied. Run the photoelectric sensor wires through the strain reliefs to the inside of the operator. On the control board, locate the connector labeled Close Eyes Interrupt. Remove the wiring block from the board and note which terminal is positive and which is negative. Polarity is important for wiring the photoelectric sensors. Use a small screwdriver to loosen the screws in the wiring block, then insert the wires from the sensors. The brown wire goes into the positive terminal and the blue wire goes into the negative terminal. Tighten the screws and plug the wiring block back onto the control board. Entrapment protection devices can also be wired to the expansion board. Be sure to check and follow all local codes for proper grounding procedures. Before proceeding, disconnect AC power at the main power source circuit breaker. To access the input power connections and power wiring sockets, loosen the nut on the cover of the EMI board and remove the cover. Run AC power wires to the operator through UL listed conduit. Connect the green wire to the ground wire using a wire nut. Connect the white wire to neutral using a wire nut. Connect the black wire to hot using a wire nut. There are power wiring sockets for 240 volts and 120 volts. The factory default is 120 volts. Be sure to plug the power wiring connector into the socket that matches the AC power for the application. Replace the EMI cover back and tighten the nut. The HCT-DCU features backup batteries that continue to power the operator in the event of a power outage. On the control board, locate the J15 wire harness. It's plugged into the connector labeled BAT. Unplug it. Locate the battery compartment. It's on the same side of the operator where the antenna attaches. Loosen the screws on the battery cover and let it swing out of the way. Always wear gloves and safety glasses and exercise caution when handling batteries. Use the provided black jumper wire to connect the positive terminal of one battery to the negative terminal of the other battery. Slide the batteries most of the way into the battery compartment, being careful not to short the terminals together. Connect the red wire to the positive terminal on one battery. Connect the black wire to the negative terminal on the other battery. Close the battery compartment cover and tighten the screws. Plug the J15 wire harness back into the BAT connector on the control board. This will power up the control board. You may see a small spark, but this is normal. Attach the antenna to the connector on the same side as the battery compartment. Do not straighten the antenna. Reconnect power at the circuit breaker. The AC power switch turns on power from the electrical supply source. Switch AC power on. Turning this switch off does not turn off battery power, which means the operator can still open and close the gate or door. To completely power the operator off, disconnect wire harness J15 from the control board. 
The reset switch, located next to the AC power switch, can be used to temporarily stop movement of the operator for as long as the reset switch is depressed. For additional functionality, refer to the manual. Now you'll need to set the travel limits. Once the HCT DCU is installed, the entrance must only be used for vehicular traffic. Pedestrians must use a separate entrance. Entrapment protection devices must be installed and the safety reversal system must be tested. Never increase the force beyond the minimum amount required to move the gate or door, and never use force adjustments to compensate for a binding or sticking gate or door. On the control board, locate the Set Open and Set Close buttons. Press and hold the Set Open and Set Close buttons at the same time to clear any previously set limits and enter Limit Setting Mode. Both the set open and set close LEDs will start flashing. To set the open limit, press and hold one of the move gate buttons to move the gate or door to the fully open position. Then press and release the set open button. To set the close limit, press and hold one of the move gate buttons to move the gate or door to the fully closed position. Then press and release the set close button. Now run the operator through a full open and close cycle using the test buttons for open and close. It is important not to interrupt the open close cycle because this is when the operator sets the force automatically. If the limits are properly set, the operator will automatically exit limit setting mode. After any adjustments are made, perform the obstruction test. Open the door or gate. Place a solid object under the door or gate. Make sure you use an object that can withstand the forces generated during this test. Run the gate or door in the closed direction. The gate or door should stop and reverse upon contact with the solid object. If the gate or door does not reverse off the solid object, reduce the force by turning the force control slightly counterclockwise. The gate or door should have enough force to reach both the open and close limits, but must reverse after contact with a solid object. Locate the back drive switch on the control board. Make sure it is always set to secure. This enables motor braking. Finally, permanently install the provided warning signs on each side of the gate or door in plain view. Install the warning sign on the door or gate interior on the side nearest to the control station. The HCT DCU is installed and ready to use. For more information, visit us on the web at liftmaster.com.